Very good evening. I promise we will not talk TV versus digital for the next 30, 35 minutes. What we will talk, however, is advertising versus IMCs. Now, you know, when I started my career 30 something back, years back with Procter & Gamble, the company knew only advertising and that also only TV advertising. For the love of money or anything, you couldn't get them to do anything else. Then I spent five years in Coke and suddenly the game changed to IMCs, activation, touchpoint marketing, a whole lot of uh, non-reach frequency built media plans. And then of course in my agency life, I spent a lot of time with Lever where again activation was very, very core to their very being. I think Madison's best calling card for I, what I think is the best IMC done ever and across 10 years has been transforming Cadbury's from a gift for someone you love to a Moomita moment. Now all of this happened and of course there are plenty more examples that we've got. But in the last seven, eight years if I've been looking back, I somehow feel that with all this journey planning, performance marketing, top of the funnel stuff, has IMC somehow got a little shaded? Now to discuss the role of IMC or the relevance of IMC in today's world, I couldn't have a better panel than this. We've, we've already been introduced to you. We've got Ashwin from Godridge, Vinay from Pitilite, and of course, Shoma from Marico. So let's just kick this off by, let me let's start on a fun note. Shoma, we'll start with you. Tell us in your illustrious career, which is the, your, the one IMC that you've done that has really been close to your heart. And we'll go around the, uh, the, the panel on this one. Audible now? Yeah. yeah. So my favorite one is uh, the one where we launched the brand Godrej Air, uh, especially because there was no money. <laughs> that to me is the favorite one. You want to talk about it? Let them know what it is. So essentially, uh, Godrej Air, which will be about 10 years old now, um, it is a home freshener, home and car freshener brand. And it, uh, we launched it in 2012. And the best part is when you are launching a brand, the monies are absolutely limited. Almost like, you know, uh, if there is some spare money after the core categories and brands in the company, you would be spending on this. That is where actually, what we tried was experiential marketing, given that it was a fragrance category. And that's where we had to go much, much beyond television, which was the traditional media. And at that point of time, digital was just about taking off. Print has been big around that time. So we used all sorts of sources of reach while maximizing on ROI for every penny spent. So we fragranced the newspaper for the first time and literally at a rupee one cost reached out to consumers, lakhs of consumers in their households, uh, creating that fragrance experience, reached out to consumers on radio while they were you know, driving, hence tapping onto them at the most relevant moment, which is while they are in their car, why don't they fragrance, think of fragrancing their car and drive, making their driving experience better? and television, of course, to get a mass awareness of the brand. So, you know, with limited monies, what we did was within three years, we actually became the market leaders and guess who we toppled? We actually toppled Procter & Gamble. And that for us was a big, big win and hence the power of IMC, according to me. Wonderful. Ashwin, your turn. Yeah, I got to go way back. It shows you how much of a reach-based planner I am, but. When I was a media planner, I got an MV for this, so I think it came straight to mind. And many familiar faces I hear from that time. So on Surf Excel, um, and it was very reach-based planning. And, and uh, I remember at that time, um, an idea came uh, to me on print, which is, you know, because I wanted to do this UGC thing, and everybody was user-generated content was a big thing, and viral videos, and let's give the part to the, to the creators and not the advertisers, and that was the condition at the time many years ago and I remember at the time and we had big print budgets we had really no budget for all this creator based stuff and the idea was let's give uh, kids the power to be editors let's remove all the content from a page and we called it Surf Excel Nanne Patrakar 
I think we did it with, uh, with the publication in UP. And so um, we basically stripped page three or page five, I forget the exact uh, page number, of all its content and just left uh, placeholders, which is, you know, an empty place for a picture and lines, and just had questions on the top. And it was basically, you know, let, ki let kids create the world that they want to see. And what is the news in that child's life on that day was what the idea was about. So I think it's, uh, I, I've, no, I've not seen, I've not had a better idea than that, so I, that's what I came up with. But here's a case where, look, it was a high reach medium, and I think it's very hard to justify IMC uh, if the media is not high reach. It also shows you the power of the idea. If the idea is not worth investing behind, you'll find it doesn't have much scale. So that's the one that comes to me quite fondly. Fantastic. And, and Vinay, what about you? Yeah, so I think uh, a couple of, I would say, points that I picked up from what both Shoma and Ashwin said, and I think that's the, you know, reality of every marketer, every advertiser out there today is that it's damn hard. There is very little money, right? Uh, interestingly, Sam, you showed some data about the top 50 advertisers moving from 38% to 30%. If you do the math, they scale down spends from 100 to 95 in the same one year while the ad X grew. And it's becoming so difficult today because viewership is going down. Rates are going through the roof. And people's attention spans are like mosquitoes. So it's really, really difficult to build really strong brands. So I think, to be really honest, in the last 10 years, I don't think I've been part of any great IMC. We've been forced to make really good, strong choices in terms of what we want to say and where we want to say. And we have taken those bets and really made the most of those. And I think that's what's really something that strikes me today. And that, I think, is today's reality. So going back to your question on is IMC getting undervalued, I think it's becoming far more difficult than what it used to be. And doing a really good job of all of it is becoming even more difficult than before. Okay, wonderful. Now we've got, a, we've got some kind of a thing to debate about. We've had two examples where two CMOs have very fondly talked about what they thought were great ideas and it probably helped the brand. And one... CMO who says, hand on heart, probably it's not an easy thing to do at this point in time. We will come to this advertising versus IMC question in a second. But before that, for clarity's sake, let's define IMC. Is IMC a multimedia plan? Is IMC a media plan with an innovation? Or is an IMC something broader than that? So, I don't know, Ashwin, you want to take a stab? Yeah, I mean, that's a question I asked when I got the call for this, which is, can you, we mean integrated marketing communications, right? And there are ways, there are 360, et cetera. I, I, I think true IMC done well is basically an idea that derives it from strategy. I, I think that IMC can be indulgences. Um, and often they come from, let's say, for example, if you feel pressure to do something beyond running the advertising, it's not quite fancy as a marketer sometimes to say, I got a piece of advertising, it's really good, and it just went and I kept increasing reach. So then you kind of start adding uh, you know, additional media to it. I think if you have ideas that line itself well with what your initial advertising strategy was, and able to use the medium in order to kind of develop or build on the strategy, I think that's what I would define as IMC. It is the use of multimedia and understanding the nuances of different media, and being able to adapt core advertising ideas into ideas that deliver the same communication job, but do it in a way that, uh, you know, fits the medium. I would say so that's my... So, core idea. advertising idea amplified across different media touch points. Yep. Okay. Shoma, your definition. So, to me, yes, of course, it's about using different sets of medium. But like Ashwin said, every medium has a role to play. And I would say that use it only first it helps you optimize in terms of reach for the money that is there. So basic objective is, you know, for example, when you're using TV, like I think just before this, we had that whole debate about, you know, the long tail channels, etc., the cost of reaching uh, incremental reach of the next audience. The thing is that once you hit a point where the marginal cost of reaching the next audience goes up, that's when you anyway have to go to the next set of media. And in this case, in today's world, and in fact, interestingly, I was just going through the pitch report, 
which clearly actually stated that in addicts, this is the first year that digital spend has overtaken TV. And it actually tells you how consumers are also consuming different sets of media and how they are, you know, sort of over-engaging on digital. And which is where you then start looking at the cost of reach. Is it better, easier to reach uh, with higher ROI in terms of going to digital for that incremental? One is that. Second is, what is the role of the media? For example, I'll just go back to the example that I stated, that if I want to drive experience among my consumers, right, I will have to reach out to them, not with just the brand like I do on TV. I have to be physically available for them. And physically available, I can do that either on print, the way we did by fragrancing the print newspaper, or by doing sampling like we did in that case by tying up with Indigo Airlines, where we actually sampled our product over there because that was relevant. Having said that, for each of the brand, each of the category, they have their own strategic task. And the usage of the media, and hence how much audience you are targeting to reach basis the objective you have, business objective you have, that should define what will be the mix of media rather than, you know, it being fashionable or like uh, you said, forced to use that because it's nice to do a IMC. Okay. Um, I'm going to extend the same question to you, Vinay, but if from a, because the sense I'm getting is what Ashwin was saying is an idea different touch points and, and I think the part which Shoma sort of built on that was yes every medium has a different role to play but she also brought in the question of incremental reach plateauing and therefore the role of maybe an IMC coming in but I've seen a lot of uh, IMCs in the form of say you know you could have a mission in media I mean Sapola World Heart Day is that Tata T's power of 49 was a mission in media the entire activation idea is I think the entire entire piece about Kuch Meetha Ho Jai is a thing is an activation idea that Cadbury pursued across various touch points. You've got these tent pole ideas like Vodafone Superfan is something which they've done for many years in IPL and around this one tent pole and like that it goes. This, I mean, like that there could be a few more ideas. To your mind, what is a good way of sort of defining an IMC? See, I think... Uh, I used to think actually 1.9 my favorite was also at one point in time, Britannia Khao, World Cup Jao. It was at one level of promotion, but at, according to me, it was a deadly IMC. No, no, it was a great IMC, and at that time, it did really well. We did amazingly well when we did it first in 1999. Uh, when we did it much later in 2019, we really fell flat on our faces. So, uh, you know, success is as important as failure. But, I, you know, I just want to step back a bit. I think uh, in my own definition of IMC, it's about touch points, sure, but it's a lot about many other things as well, right? Uh, for example, the dimension of time is not something that we discuss so much in the, you know, in, in, in the conversations around IMC. It's, it's very campaign-led very often, but some of the best examples like you're talking about, whether it is Kuch Meetha Ho Jai, is because that communication has been integrated into what the brand stands for for years, right? And we've talked about consistency ad nauseum in today's, you know, uh, forum as well. I think one of the best uh, examples from Fidelight on good integrated marketing communication is the brand story of Fevicor. For years, for the last 20, 30 years, whenever people have interacted with the brand Fevicor, whether it's been on TV, whether it's been on social media, whether it's been on activation that's happened in the Kumbh Mela, they have seen pretty much exactly the same story. To me, that's great integrated marketing. I mean, to your point, Fevicor's 60 year campaign was using the ad as content. Exactly. I mean, the entire plan was seeding it as content and it was viewed. The two-minuter was actually viewed as content. So, right. so, so, yeah, I feel, so therefore the dimension of time is really important. The second thing that's also happened is because it's become so difficult, as I was talking a few minutes earlier, we as advertisers also, if you step back, are making a few mistakes, you know. Uh, I'll give you an example. We have, a, we have this brand called Dr. Fix It. It's a waterproofing brand. One of, one of the things that we have always talked about is that it's an expert waterproofing solution. But for the longest time, anybody who would call the helpline of Dr. Fixit would speak to a guy who was a regular call center person. It's only in the last three years that we actually have a civil engineer who talks like an expert. So imagine you speak a guy and he says, hello, my Dr. Fixit is talking about you. You know, can you give me a number? But I really don't know anything about what your problem is. That's bad IMC. 
a great IMC would be that if I say I'm a good expert waterproofing solution provider, then I need to walk the talk where you come and meet me. And today, consumers are reaching out to us at multiple touch points, multiple, multiple touch points. And many of those touch points are places where we are not really getting our brand proposition out in the same way as we do when we talk to them of our own accord. Uh, look at how we respond to complaints on consumer media, uh, on social media, sorry. Mercedes-Benz has exactly the same thing when they talk to a disgruntled customer on Twitter, which a Parley Products has. It's exactly the same speak. And that, I think, are things that we need to probably reflect on and learn upon and see as to how else, because there are so many more mediums that we are in control of which don't cost money. Are we doing a great job as, a, as advertisers? I think we need to look at hard at ourselves and make sure that we keep upping the game. I know I'm sounding a bit like Cassandra, but that's not the intention. The intention is that there is a lot more we can do as well. No, I think that's a great point you made, but let me build on your touch point point. If you take touch points into the consumer journey, which everybody seems to be now talking about, what it tells you is at different stages of the consumer journey, the kind of touch points that they are sort of uh, uh, exposed to, there is an opportunity to help them unlock the door to success or to purchase. So if we are to adopt consumer journey based marketing, does it automatically like exactly like the, the call center guy becoming a civil engineer, that's part of the consumer journey piece that you're talking about. Now, is that something which becomes de rigueur for CMOs to then tell your people, okay, fine. Advertising is basically just, we call it the encounter phase where you're just going and telling people what your brand is and that's addressing one part of the journey, but there's a lot of other parts of the journey which are getting untapped. So is it becoming now the, no, is it becoming imperative to touch those, those consumer journey elements? Vinay? I don't think we have a choice there, we have to. I think you've answered your question in your question itself. It's, but I then it doesn't show up in the budget allocations. It doesn't show up in the budget allocation is the truth. Yeah, but I think in every action that we do as a, you know, as a marketer, you will see a lot more investment going into performance than what it used to. You know, and I think what's happening as a result is many of us are spending a lot more on what we think or what we are able to really attribute to good ROI. And that's something that is happening. No, so, so Ashwin, you want to weigh in on this? The, the, and there's a further element come in. Now it's come in the ROI, performance marketing, whereas IMC, I wasn't classically looking at as performance marketing. Is there attribution of IMC to final sales? Sure. But is it linear? Probably not. So from that standpoint, do you feel regardless of performance marketing, consumer journey marketing makes it imperative to look at different touch points, going by your definition, take the idea and move it forward? Well, it depends on the size of the brand. So if you have a very large brand which reaches a couple of dozen million consumers, it's very hard for you to expect to plot out the consumer journey and the thing with consumer's journey is they're not very linear. Most consumer journey slides this year are quite complicated, right? And not every consumer discovers you on TV, reads about you in print, searches for you, changes her mind, comes back on an e-commerce site, buys it. It's not quite that linear. I think the question is understanding how your brand grows. If it's a very large brand, it typically grows by strengthening equity. And you strengthen equity by uh, basically advertising and include IMC in that. So if you're able to, at scale, as Shoma correctly kind of uh, said, reach as many possible consumers as you can and keep strengthening brand memories over time, that is kind of, you know, across, that's basically why they purchase. You're memorable and they enter the category at times, they exit the category at other times and they buy you. So I think if it makes you memorable, we have to be less anxious about reaching every possible consumer at the time which we feel she's going to buy and uh, just build stronger brands, giant equities over time and consumers okay. buy as a result so of that. Le let, me, let me challenge you on that point. Completely agree that reinforcement of brand consistency and in my session that's going to follow after this, I'm also going to re re reiterate that point. But there are sometimes where communication tasks are where you have to reposition the brand or get the people to think about a brand a little differently. So like Cadbury's from being a gift for someone you love to a moo mitha moment, appropriate mithai moments. Fundamental change. Now mental advertising reinforces and builds mental structures in consumers' minds. 
So if you just continue to advertise, you won't break those mental structures quite easily. But for example, that empty page that you had, which showed uh, what you could do for surf, and therefore what kids could do, probably could do a little bit more than one more exposure of advertising. Whereas, well, of course, the, the other experience, that other example that Shroma gave, that was a here and now new brand launch. She used experiential marketing where you could smell the product and therefore almost sampling. So that was at the beginning. But for a mature brand, you used IMC, arguably where advertising couldn't work. No, I would say it was, it is, it is all advertising. So even though you chose to activate, uh, let's stick with the Surfix example, I'm more familiar, but even the Cadbury's one, I suspect, the reason why it worked and it able to stick with it and give it scale was it built upon the existing platform. So let's say for Surf's case, it is stains are good. If kids get dirty in the pursuit of, let's say, drawing a picture on a piece of newspaper, it reaffirms what that brand's memory structure is, which is that kids got dirty doing it and creating something so it's good. So as long as you're able to do it at scale and it reaffirms brand message, I never ran a coupon there, nor I suspect you did on Cadbury, ran a coupon there and say, buy now, buy now. So it is relieving yourself of the anxiety to trigger a purchase today in the understanding that this helps me deepen equity. What you did is you added an attribute of giving to a brand that was already pretty much well-loved, considered a good brand, considered warm, pretty much the same values. But you were able to enhance that by adding another layer that was important. Um, and I think that's in, important. You have to understand where the brand comes from, what the advertising is trying to do, and then use IMC to build on those attributes. Repositioning is really hard. Both these are not repositioning cases. Both of these are extension cases. Repositioning is really, really hard because you have to fight against what the natural uh, positioning or natural equity of that brand is. And there are very few cases, none that I'm really well aware of, that are successfully repositioned fundamentally at, at great scale. But if you're a smaller brand and you, and you have to, let's say you have a target of a couple of, uh, you know, lakhs recruitment, etc., then perhaps you might want to go the acquisition route, uh, which may turn out to be more cost effective for you in the aggregate. So, so, so Shoma, if you have to change mental structures, would you rely on IMC over advertising? Or would you just change your ad and hope that it works? So to my mind, first of all, segregating advertisement from IMC is a little tough task in today's world because you have to reach out to the consumer where the consumer is today, first of all. So TV and digital have to go hand in hand, for sure, right? Now coming back to, I think at some point you were talking about performance marketing and then you were talking about, you know, uh, building on the top of the funnel, right? What I would say is that everything, the need for IMC or changing the advertisement, which are the mediums you use, Actually, it depends really on what is the brand's objective. Like for example, if I'm looking for a particular season sale that I have to do, I will focus more on the bottom of the funnel, which is essentially performance marketing, right? But if I'm to build the brand consistently, I will be focusing on the top of the funnel, middle of the funnel to build awareness and consideration. And that is where using the right medium to reach out to the maximum amount of people with the relevant message, but consistent message from the brand is what is critical. And you reach out with that, um, that message where you think the consumer is at that point of time. So it is not a choice of whether I choose bottom of the funnel and top of the funnel as such in terms of, you know, in terms of media, what you choose is basically what is it with the brand that I want to achieve. So so the sense, I'm okay, I get the fact that you want looking at the commu communication task. But now let me just, for example, reference the last panel when Sandeep talked about, he was made, made two references to Govardhan Ghi. Basically what we did there was, in KBC, at a certain point when the guy asks, answers the question and reaches the next Prag, he said, Tumare Moh Mein Ghi Shakkar, and there was a whole lot of Govardhan Ghi, Ghi kind of references made. Now, it just got the brand to be seen in a completely different setup and it gave a different context and relevance to the brand in a KBC setting, stature, whatever else it might be. And somewhere, and this is an entrepreneur or a promoter-led company, they felt it worked tremendously well and you heard the story that from six weeks they extended it to an 18 weeks. 
Now, this was at the cost of several weeks of reach building advertising you could have otherwise done. Now, would any, would, when I, would you have sacrificed 12 or 15 or 18 weeks of tough advertising or vanilla advertising for this kind of stuff? I think the, I think the decision really is that if you are doing something like this, which is high impact, uh, whether you are appearing in some kind of integration on something as marquee as KBC or whether you want to be on an IPL jersey, it really, memory structures take a really long time to build. And unless you do this for weeks and weeks and weeks, it's not going to work. So if Govardhan had done this for three episodes and walked out, it would have probably done nothing for them, is what my reckoning is. I think the fact that they stuck to it and the fact that they didn't do multiple touch points, but they did that one touch point really, really well. To me, it's great marketing now, and I would, you know, commend them for that. Wonderful. So now, let's get to the, cut to the jugular. Typically, what we guys find is, look, everybody, agencies love innovation. They love the idea of a, because, you know, people don't remember a 600 GRP, well-optimized campaign, which we delivered deadly reach at the lowest cost and all the rest of it. People do it, but they don't remember it. Finally, people remember and boardrooms talk about some great ideas that you did and executed. So we get our kicks and of course awards and everything else, but I, we all feel brand fame comes from a lot of these activation or IMC led ideas. But still when it comes to getting them approved, advertising, hard working advertising wins nine times out of 10, 9.5 times out of 10. What is the advice you'd like to give everybody in this room to increase that hit rate from 9.5 to at least maybe 8? So 2 out of 10 times we can get it. Anybody wants to take a bash at that? I'm, I'm looking for answers here. I can try and so take a bash yeah, at that. You're the least committed to the IMC course, so you start. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that sounds very accusatory. But no, 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 not accusatory. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> but see, it's... Um, you know, I, I really think, see, I've worked in two different industries, guys. Uh, one of them has been in large CPG in companies like Britannia, where typically very often what has worked for us in the last 10 years has been very, very hardworking advertising. It's a monthly purchase. It's a top-up purchase. You want people to remember your brand every day of the year when they go to the shop to buy stuff. So honestly, we didn't do much impact. That We've done a few. It hasn't worked as well for us. What really worked for us is relentless, uh, you know, reach building with great frequency, just make sure that you are somewhere in the back of the mind. We didn't need awareness at that time. We just needed salience at that time to make sure that when people go to buy their groceries, they remember to buy us. Worked really well, worked like a charm. Nothing sexy about it, nothing won any awards except for a few things which I won't talk about right now, but it worked really, really well. But at the same time, it depends on whether if you want to really get very good reach going or if you want, if you're if your objectives are different, if you really want to be a challenger brand and you want to unseat somebody, you would do this thing very differently. And, and therefore, I don't think that and, and in a country like India or in any fact of life, while there is one good uh, way of doing things, the exact opposite way is also right. And I think it's really up to us as marketers to find what is our right and stay the course on that. That's my Ashwin, your, How can we get better success rate at selling IMCs. Can IMCs be used to break inertia? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? So a lot of media is a procurement subject and what's the creative subject in it? And I think the creative subject in it is how close you are to the advertising idea. I think, honestly, all the examples that have been mentioned here were built on the back of really good advertising ideas. And I think what happens in pitches is we forget that. And I think uh, what I see more and more happening is... Uh, there are like a standard set of ideas that have been doing the round for the last decade. Uh, and there are a few that come which is with a more medium focus. Which is, hey, look, you know, this brand is doing that, that brand is doing that, FOMO, etc. I think what it needs is for the creator of the idea to deeply understand that advertising is not your enemy. Uh, advertising is the foundation on which great IMCs are built, great brands are built. Obviously. If you have a sense of what the equity of the brand is, why why that medium needs to be treated in a unique way, whether it's experiential, whether it's a question of attention and time, whether the question of brands are not the creator, but creators are the creator. I think then you'll find more and more ideas getting approved. I think the issue is the volume of ideas 
don't justify a better ratio than the one you mentioned, but good quality ideas in general get picked up. I think there aren't many that are really good ideas that I regret not having done. They usually do get invested in. Okay, and Shoma, if, do you think the, if IMCs have to be done, get, get more of a hit rate, do you think they should be introduced at the AOP stage or can they come any time in the year? Interesting question. They have to be, I believe that they have to be pre-planned because they have to be integrated to what the brand strategy and the objective for the year or even the long-term strategy for the brand is what it stands for. And particularly since you were talking about can we do this big blast one time and expect a tremendous ROI, it should be consistent with what the brand is trying to build. And yeah, I mean, if there's a brilliant idea like, you know, the ones that you see in Super Bowl, etc., then it does have merit in terms of, you know, getting the brand idea out in a clutter break motion. Like I'm sure most in this room would remember how Volkswagen introduced one of its uh, cars in a, in a newspaper where it was a talking newspaper literally. So some of these clutter breaking ones can actually give you tremendous ROI and memorability. But yes, it has to be consistent with the brand and has to be planned in the beginning of the year itself is what I believe. Okay, thank you so much. Now, as a, just to wind up this panel, not necessarily to your own lives, but if you have to be as, as an observer of the marketing industry, just give your pithy answer to the topic of the panel discussion. Are advertisers undervaluing the importance of IMC? Ashwin, start with you. Just yes, no comments. No, there are still as many MVs being given out each year, so I guess IMCs are happening. But I think the question is on quality. Are we seeing like really great breakthrough work? We've had to, if you recall, we have to go back quite in past, except for Shoma's right, which is quite new. We've had to go back to the past, think about IMCs we admire. So probably it's not a question of quantity, but quality. I think perhaps uh, it might be the reverse of what you're saying, Vikram. It's a lot of ideas are going through but maybe we're not creating the memorability, and maybe it's because of fragmentation and attention. Maybe the quality isn't there uh, to the extent that we would like it to be. Great. Quality, I mean, quantity is there, quality is not. Shoma? Yeah, I would agree with Ashwin's uh, statement. Also, the reality is that, especially for CPG companies, given the inflationary pressure, the bare basic sustenance media is something that is kind of in work right now, but. I would say that it's not because people are undervaluing the power of it, it's also the quality of ideas coming up and where we need help of teams like Madison. Okay. Quality of ideas again. Vinay? I do think that as an industry over the last 20 years, we have probably undervalued it a bit. And I also think that's also happened because we have commoditized ideas. Brand stewardship the way it used to be and the way it is now, uh, we have started almost farming out ideas from everywhere as an industry and, and people don't have long-standing stewards of brands as they used to have. I think there is a balance that we need to strike and I think we can get better. So that's my pithy answer. Okay. On that somewhat optimistic note, let's all thank the panel with a nice round, sort of round of applause. Thank you so much. <laughs>